Hey, this is Brooks with Character Design Forge. So this is definitely not a video about how to get more likes on Instagram or anything on a superficial plane, but it also isn't just make great art. It's some practical thoughts, some do's and don'ts, putting yourself in the shoes of a potential audience member, and a healthy bit of figuring out what it is that's important. First off, let's establish that art that builds an audience serves that purpose, and is maybe presented in a different way than, say, a portfolio that's meant to attract clients or to get you hired. One thing I think is dangerous is building an audience just for the sake of it, or for the sake of popularity. Chasing the amount of followers and likes that you can get is a great way not only to potentially wreck your mental health, but to also throw you off course for maybe some important things that you should be doing instead. And there's a difference between creating high quality work that happens to be appreciated, creating something consistent with what an audience expects, and creating things from a pandering and attention hungry place, eager to prey upon the low hanging, people pleasing fruit of what will make you popular. This goes along with something I've called the fan art trap before. Fan art tends to get a little more attention or a lot more attention than original work because it's more widely recognizable. It's dangerous sometimes though to get that little bump from a piece that's fan art, and you start creating more with the purpose of building an audience from it. And usually, those extra folks arrived at your work because they're fans of that thing, not because they're necessarily fans of your art. It's a hard truth to understand. They could convert over, it does happen, but if you're going to start full bore on creating fan work, not because you want to and feel compelled to, but because you're playing that game, what happens when you post something original? You get crickets, unfollows, oh no. I thought this was a Tommy the Copyright fan account. What the heck is a Wanderlumen? And if all you wanted to make was fan work, that's fine. But if not, look at all the time you've now divested in another direction for what is, let's get down to it, pandering, or simply counter to whatever goals that you may have. And this is a really good place to ask, on the other hand, what your goal in building an audience is. Is it about bringing people along on the journey as you improve? Is it about building hype for a book or a comic project that you're working on? Is it to sustain yourself off of a store full of prints and original art? Is it to help people? Is it to get some more potential client or studio eyes on your work for your next job? Is it something else completely? Well, these are all valid reasons that people have had, and those things inform your priorities. Building a portfolio is a business-to-business -business transaction, B2B. You want to show what you're capable of, and all of the practical and technical applications of how you get work done because the goal is to get hired. Building an audience is a B to C, business to customer transaction. You're sharing things in the hopes that it will be of some form of value to the person that sees it directly. And maybe they get joy from the subject matter, or aesthetic, or humor, or story that you're telling. Maybe all they give you is attention, or they support it, or even eventually have some kind of monetary transaction where they back your Patreon or buy a book from you or something, but that informs what you share. Because where a turnaround sheet, props, tests, and the nitty gritty work may be appreciated more on a portfolio, your public facing work is about making something that is of value to the audience member. Important here to remember is that for you and me, we probably follow a lot of artists that we like. Because we like art, we want to draw like them, we're friends with them, or we're interested in their process. The average person, though, doesn't really care about a lot of that. They're probably not art nerds, which is fine. They don't think deep into it, they just like looking at it, or there's something about it that makes it worth following for them. It's all the same reasons that someone has for wanting to see a movie or not. And a lot of times it doesn't have a bearing on how good you are, it's just their interest. Even though it's easy to tie your self-worth into those things, it's really easy to spiral out. I'll take you back to thoughts that I've had in the past. So when you're first starting out, it's probably friends and family around you that you're kind of sharing stuff with and maybe hoping for support from. And I used to take it kind of personally when let's say a friend didn't show any interest in my work. Now, maybe you felt the same. It's not really great, especially if you're even supportive of them in return. You're kind of waiting for your end of the transaction, some kind of, I supported you, so where's your support for me? And I think that's dangerous. Uh, a, to reduce someone close to you to just what kind of support they can give your work or reduce them to a transaction. I know I'm saying transaction a lot in this video, don't worry, I care about people in meaningful ways, I'm not a sociopathic robot. And B, 
Maybe your friend is a plumber, let's say, and you aren't interested in plumbing at all. So how much interest are you going to show in their plumbing work? I mean, hopefully some, because friends should ideally be showing an interest in each other and supporting one another. But that same indifference or lack of interest that you have in plumbing, removed of it being relevant to your friend, might be exactly what people who aren't interested in art or the kind of art you make feel. And that can be immensely hard to wrap your head around, especially because plumbing isn't a form of entertainment or culture. It's not this forward-facing thing the way that movies and games and art stuff are. There's all sorts of ways that we can start to take these things personally, but it's so important to remember that not everyone is interested in everything. Now going off of that for a next point of sorts, knowing that not everyone is interested in everything, what is the value or hook of your work beyond it just being paintings or sketches? Is there something unique in voice, aesthetic, story, presentation that you're doing? Not unique as in never done before, but novel or quality. Because considering that not everyone's an art nerd, who might be interested in what you make for other reasons? Another thing to keep in mind, what Andy J. Mailer calls the language of the platform. I've been talking about Instagram a lot, even though this, this audience concept is broader. But on Instagram, what tends to do well are nice, finished, well-presented pieces. Maybe a few process shots mixed in. It may be different if you're running like a meme page or a comic or something, but for most artists, this kind of holds true. But if you go to Twitter, the language is different. It's like a crowded room of people talking to each other after work. It's a lot more casual. People post their art and say, oops, my hand slipped. And then maybe they're sharing a little bit more about themselves. And then for example, on TikTok, oh, hold on. Just gotta check my birth certificate. Ah, I am too old to legally download TikTok. Sorry, those are the rules. And now we're in the quick tip zone, just a few things to consider, some that you may have heard before. Number one, when I say be consistent, you probably think of a schedule or a frequency that you post stuff, but I'm actually thinking more along the lines of consistency in the content. So some people like to post maybe a personal photo, sharing something about themselves every once in a while. I think it's harmless. It helps you to get to know the person a little bit more. I'm talking like six art posts to every one anniversary or exciting thing, I don't know. Personally, it's been a long time since I made a personal photo post on Instagram. I'm just posting art and art-related stuff there. What I can't stand seeing is like, all right, you've got great art, but that was 16 photos of you and your wife out to brunch ago. Now, try and determine what brought most people to you and try to make that the main thing that you're sharing. Just use some common sense here. On one hand, your dog is cute. On the other hand, I don't want to see your sandwich. I don't. Read the room, Gerald. Quick tip number two. Wow, we are only on number two. When it comes to consistency, unless money and your livelihood depend on it, don't worry about missing a post, posting late, or posting less frequently. Some of y'all really giving yourself anxiety and apologizing that day nine of Inktober is a day late, and I guarantee that either no one was keeping track or that they can forgive you for it. Don't bend your life to social media at the cost of your sanity or something else that's valuable. That's definitely starting to get into the realm of the popularity contest, and it's one thing if you're constantly publicly declaring that you're doing challenges and then you never follow up, but skipping a day or wrapping a series up early is not going to destroy your reputation or your 300 follower account. And a 15 page apology in the description is just, don't beat yourself up guys. Number three, be smart about the in-process stuff that you post. I've talked even last week about keeping some drawing time and the things that you make to yourself and not having the only stuff you make be stuff you plan to share. And if you're doing life drawing and gesture drawing and studies and practice, good, that's practice. But sharing it probably isn't as interesting as you think it is. And it can be a little bit infectious where you start any of these practice things thinking about sharing it or posting it, and now your mindset and the goal of it and the function of it has changed from improving your skills to impressing people. And it will absolutely suffer for it. So if you've got you know a gesture drawing that you're really proud of, go for it but no one wants to thumb through 13 individual posts of scribbled, half-done, Bic Pen facial expression studies. Read the room. Number four, sometimes people really like seeing your journey. So even though you're putting your best foot forward now and always, you don't have to necessarily go back and delete your old stuff that you feel much better than now. People can understand that old stuff is old and they like to see your progress. This is different advice to what I'd give for portfolios, where I'd say only have the best stuff on display. 
Number five, have a conversation and share with people. Don't constantly sell at them. Be a person, man, and for God's sake, be humble. On the other hand, don't be unduly self-deprecating. Stand up for yourself. Get rid of that aspiring artist thing in your bio. Holy cow, is that an automatic delegitimizer? Let the audience member decide if you're worth following. Don't decide it for them. Number six, when you do pay attention to likes, only half pay attention to them. There is a certain growth hacking mindset that tells you, okay, that drawing of a cat got five more likes than your original character. Going forward, it's time to make only more cats. It's not that deep. There are other factors like time of day or week or year that it was posted, inexplicable algorithmic fluctuations, the fact that your cat post was easier on the eyes and your original character post was obtuse and required a paragraph explanation, or the fact that people like cats. It's nice to note this information, but don't bend your entire career and plan and goals around it because ultimately audiences can be incredibly fickle and there is a degree of truth to that whole idea of an audience not knowing what they want until you show it to them. And if there's one thing that's echoed through all of this as one final thought, it's to build an audience alongside what you're already doing and not to give yourself over completely to the popularity engine. I think there's a much better chance to be fulfilled in your work that way and to get a much more authentic, deeper experience from it. Hey, would you like to see a five month gap in posts while I was busy with client work and YouTube? A flurry of daily Star Wars drawings that last several unavoidable swipes of the thumb that I'm really unhappy with and a huge fluctuation in style as I slowly improved over the years while not really understanding the platform, then you can follow me on Instagram, at Bagel Denizen. Want to hear me talk about art and game dev, but also make silly jokes and comment on what fun new Nintendo thing is out while maintaining some semblance of art-related consistency? Then you can follow me on the much more relaxed, at Bagel Denizen, on Twitter. And if you're interested in working with me, you can go to brooksegleston.com. My goal is to teach and help people with their art and skills as a working freelancer now, and eventually be completely audience supported, creating original works and stories. You can support both of these things by keeping my forge burning over on patreon.com slash Thank you for watching and have fun creating. <clears throat> it looks like I'm, I'm crying through this whole video because in between takes, I'm like coughing constantly. My eyes are red because of that. I'm not crying about Instagram.